Hello and thank you for joining me. I hope you're all well and enjoying your weekend. Today's video is all about my Haversack kit. It is just a relatively small kit. It does cover the first five C's of survivability and its sole purpose is just something to take if I decide to go for a wander in the woods or to check out a new bit of river for fishing. Yeah, just for a sort of a day out if you like or just for a few hours. Stay with me. So the bag itself is an old respirator case, uh, possibly Eastern European. I've probably had it about six years. It was that cheap. It's about £6.50, seven quid, that I've actually got two. It's like a cottony material on the outside, and then on the inside it's sort of got a rubber lining or a plasticky lining to offer it some waterproof or water repellency. I have treated it with some uh, wax. So first thing out, it's a wind cheetah shirt or jacket. As you can see, it's about the size of a large apple. Weighs absolutely nothing. I doubt if it even weighs half an ounce. Um, made of Pertex. A little bit expensive, but it is what it is. Next out we have a pocket organiser, there's not a great deal in here, obviously this would be in addition to my normal EDC of which I've done videos before on, and just in the front we just have some 2 inch uh, Gorilla Tape, Mini Bic lighter, a backup torch, this is a little O-light, and a whistle. Yeah, again, I EDC a torch, and in effect, I EDC a whistle as well. So we've got some redundancies. Backup knife, it's a Swiss Army. I can't remember what model it is. Uh, it's got a wood saw on there, an awl, the cutting blade, a couple of screwdrivers, and that's a, an A-lock. That's, a, again, a backup, because I EDC a Swiss Army knife. And in this pouch, we got some Tinder card. If you've not seen it before, you break a bit off, you can actually split it. Yeah, and then you just get your blade or a sharp or a stone and you just fluff it up on the inside. A little bit like how you'd prepare a bit of birch bark, but you can just fluff it up and then it, it will catch a spark. Uh, and it's just like cardboard and it's wax impregnated. Uh, a notebook. Again, it's a redundancy. It is a BCB mini fire steel and it has a built in compass. You come out of a combat survival tin at some point. Uh, but for the purpose of what I use this bag for, this really is, in my opinion, all I would need or generally need. Yeah, this is just for a short term. If I decide to go over the woods, yeah, we go to the national park for a wander, or even if I'm exploring a new bit of riverbank on a, on a club water or something like that. It's just some bits that I've got to sustain me, to keep me going and make me feel a bit happier, just for a relatively short period of time. You know, perhaps six, eight hours, that's it. So, if I still have a little compass, a Sharpie, and a hand cordage. That is that. There is nothing else in there. Of course, the whole kit really does depend on what you're going to be doing. Yeah, if it's a bushcrafty thing and I'm going to be away, you know, an overnighter and going to be away, then there would be more tools or less tools. It all depends where I'm going. In this instance, I've got a fixed blade in there. Yeah, so this is more for me sort of bushcrafty or even camping, really. If I was going for a day bimbo or a walk in the woods, uh, I probably wouldn't be carrying a fixed blade knife, especially if potentially I'm not meant to be there. Just in case a landowner come along and said, oi, get off my land. Yeah, uh, and it all got a bit shirty and called the police. You know, trespass, generally speaking, in the UK is a civil matter, it's not criminal. But if I've got that strapped to me hip and I'm on private property, but not my private property, I'm trespassing, then I'm probably going to come on in a bit of a sticky wicket with a plod. So it could be, depending on where I am, Fixed blade. Likewise, 
I may have a lap lander with me or not. Again, the Swiss Army knife set saws, it really does depend on where I am and what I intend to be doing when I'm there. It could even be, for instance, you know, if it's more bushy that I've got a, a different fire steel, or it could be, you know, carrying a more fixed blade instead, one of the companions, something like that. So as I say, it really does depend on, on what I'm doing. This is just basically a uh, cuts kit. There's a couple of safety pins in there. There are some tins with some containers. There's some anti-diarrhea tablets in there and some paracetamol, which are a pain tablet. In this one, there are six purification tablets. And then in this side of it, it's a little eight memoir, and there really are some wipes and wound closure strips and some uh, plasters, band-aids, yeah. So that's really all it is, and that's just in that, and then a couple of safety pins. And that's in a little helicon text. Uh, micro first aid kit pouch whatever it is they call it but that's pretty handy to be fair this is normally my cargo pocket at work we've got first aid kits at work but the type of work i do you're more likely to get squash your finger or or cut yourself yeah or burn yourself but primarily a cut and it can be a bit of a mare because of the equipment that we're building for lab use etc so you don't particularly want to bleed in it uh, so it's quite handy just have some plasters and that on my person In here is a poncho, pegs, guys, and a quick ridge line. Mm, is it needed for a day? Possibly not, but it's a UK, could be out and it's nice and then it decides to piddle down and you want a little bit of shelter. So, here's what it is. And then finally in here, I believe, oh no, it's not finally, but almost. We've got the M84, I think it is canteen and nesting cup. I've mentioned these before. I quite like them just for their size. They're quite small. So if you've got small hands, which I haven't, but if you have, they're a lot easier to, to handle than say the Osprey bottle, etc. But for a scouting kit, they're ideal. It's about 850, 900 milliliters of water. So slightly under a liter. It has a nesting cup and this one is aluminium. I made a lid for the cup out of some aluminium. And then what I've done is I've made a little windshield that goes with a little stove and uh, I'll show you that in more detail in a moment. And then just in this little stuff sack, there is one block of Fire Dragon, which is a, an alcohol based gel. Literally two two-in-one coffees, a teaspoon, some sugars, courtesy of making these, and a couple of protein bars, and I rate these as well. Not only do they taste nice, they're just that one bar's 200 calories, plus two bars, 400 calories, and it weighs next to nothing. So, just for a snack. And then lastly, uh, we've got some uh, packet of tissues, just in case and a little aluminium tin. These are on eBay, I think they're probably on Amazon and all. They're primarily sold for people that want to put cosmetics and make your own cosmetics and, you know, make up that sort of stuff and put it in there. Uh, it's these type of tins that I made, the Monkey Boy stove that was on my uh, GI Cup uh, canteen stove kit. But what I've got with this one, it's just the empty tin. And that's half of one of these blocks of a fire dragon gel. And I'll show you how I use this. So going back to the canteen, as I say, there is a little lid that I made out of aluminium. That's a hair bungee that I just use to keep things from rattling. We have the canteen, the cup, and I just want to touch on this. This originally came in three sections and they're on eBay, I think they're on Amazon. The titanium, it's about £6.50, something like that. And it's a pot stand where you can put an alcohol burner in it. The problem I found is that with three, it was much too big 
to take a canteen cup or a crusader cup or most certainly too big to take this little aluminium cup. So what I've done is I've discarded one section and basically it just clips together in that little groove so to speak and it was a little bit fiddly so what I've done is on that side I just drilled it and put a pop rivet in there to hold that together. So when it's unclipped as you saw it actually nests on the mug and then all I do is literally clip it together like so one of these tins half of one of these fire dragon blocks you just cut it with a knife yeah like that pop that over the top of there fill the cup half up with water uh, half weight is just over 250 milliliters so it's a cup of water which is plenty for a coffee and then that just literally stands on there and then after around six minutes six minutes 20 so admittedly it's not a fast burner but it's not something you know it's not it's for occasional use it's not something i'll be using all the time but after about six six and a, uh, six and a half minutes there'll be a lovely rolling boil in that and that is with just half the tablet so if I want to, put a brew kit, yeah, if I'm out and I fancy a hot drink, I have the capability to have one. Otherwise, I can just drink the water as is. So I usually have one or two of these field guides with me. This one's birds, this one trees. Just so I can brush up on my identification skills. Or it may be that I will just have one of these in there if I'm perhaps scoping out or recce in an area that perhaps I'm not supposed to be at. And the idea being that if I am, you know, if the landowner or representative of the, the land actually comes along and says, Oi, get off my load. Or what you're doing, instead of saying, oh, I'm actually, you know, I'm casing the place, I'm having a little recce to find out if I can do a bit of stealthy wild camping here, or practice my bushcraft skills or whatever, I can say, ever so sorry, mate. I'm bird watching, yeah, uh, and that's it. So they are still likely to say bugger off, but they're going to be a little bit more accepting for you being on their property if they believe your cover story that you are there to observe nature or whatever, as opposed to getting a big fixed knife blade out and sort of carving spoons, etc. Yeah, and additionally, and again, I can't find it for some reason. The chances are if I was going down that route and I was scoping, carrying out a recce or somewhere, I'd probably have some optics in there as well, which is because it just goes along with the, you know, the reason for you being there. So that's it. Hope you found the video of use. If you like the content, consider subscribing. If you like the video, give us one of them. And of course, I'd love to read your comments. What do you take with you? Just on a day trip, yeah, or a little recce? I'd love to read your comments. Have a great day. See you soon.